In video number 12, uh, we discussed what it means when vectors are linearly independent and how they form a basis and dimensionality and so forth. What we want to discuss in this, vec in this video is the fact that if you have a series of vectors that are mutually orthogonal, then they must be linearly independent. We'll take a couple of minutes and actually prove that. Um, before we do, remember the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Normally we're not including proofs in our linear algebra series. We're trying to have an intuitive approach whenever possible. But let's see if we can work that out for this situation. Here we have a series of vectors and they're all mutually orthogonal. So if we take the dot product or the inner product of any of these vectors with the other ones, it is always going to be zero. And we're saying if that's true, then they must be linearly independent. And to prove that, let's assume the opposite. Say we have a series of vectors that are orthogonal and they are linearly dependent. Now if that's true, then we can have a constant. I'm not going to draw the bars on the vectors anymore. We have a constant times the first vector plus another constant times the second vector like this this can equal zero. Now if these were linearly independent and we set it equal to zero, if all of these vectors were linearly independent the only way that this expression could be zero is if all of these constants, all these different constants, were also zero. Again, that's what we talked about in video 12. We're assuming that these orthogonal vectors are linearly dependent. So we can set it equal to zero so that not all of these constants can, are zero. Some of them are going to be non-zero constants. And Without loss of generality, we can assume that maybe C1 is one of the non-zero constants. So if that's true, then we could say, well, vector V1, that will equal minus C2 divided by C1 times V2 minus C3 divided by C1 times vector V3 minus C4 divided by C1 times vector V4 and so forth until we get to the last one. This has a minus sign. So vector V1 would be some combination of these other vectors here. Now we can write a general expression for vector v1. We could say well v1 equals, we'll give this a name here, we'll call this beta i times v i, where beta i equals C i divided by C 1 with a minus sign. So we're going to call the C i and i then will be summed over from i equal 2 to i equal m. So that's just a general expression for vector v1. And again, assuming that these orthogonal vectors are linearly dependent. Now, the length of v1, that's just its inner product or its dot product. Its length squared is just v1 dot v1 or that would equal v1 dot v1, which is this. 
So if we write it like this, this is the dot product of, v <coughs> of V1 with itself, giving the length V1 squared. Or we can take this inside of here and have it like this. V1 dot VI, put it inside like this. But these vectors are mutually orthogonal. So this is always going to be zero. The dot product of V1 with any of these vectors is zero because they're mutually orthogonal. So that means then that this is zero. So what we found out that is if we assume that these are these orthogonal vectors are linearly dependent, and again without loss of generality, we can say, well, this would be one of them that has a constant that's that's non-zero. But if we do that, all we end up with is the zero vector. So if we have a series of vectors that are non-zero and they're orthogonal, they cannot be linearly dependent. Therefore, they have to be there's only one other choice for them to be, and that's linearly independent. So the way we arrived at that conclusion was a little bit convoluted. We have our orthogonal vectors. We wanted to prove that they're linearly independent. We took the opposite assumption, saying, well, let's assume they're linearly dependent. But then when we do that, any vector here then that is a linear combination of these is going to come out to be zero. So that tells us then that all the non-zero vectors, the real vectors, are not going to be linearly dependent and orthogonal. So if they're orthogonal, these series of non-zero vectors, they cannot be linearly dependent. Therefore, these orthogonal vectors have to be linearly independent. OK, then that's. That's it for this video. Hope that made sense. We'll try to have maybe one or other two other proofs, but not too many. Again, we're hoping that we can construct um, an intuitive sense for these linear algebra topics that hopefully uh, make sense to people.